another skin tint is born what's up friends welcome back to my channel i hope you all are doing well by popular demand today i'm going to be reviewing the new hourglass veil skin tint we're doing the full shebang today i have a day late application i have lots of comparisons we're doing a wear test and i'm going to let you guys know if this is worth your money this is not a first impressions review i've been testing this for over a week now and i definitely have some thoughts and some conclusions to share with you guys today so if you want to hear those thoughts then keep watching okay party people let's get this skin tint on my face don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you are new here consider subscribing to my channel my name is Sophia I'm a complete luxury beauty addict and I upload new luxury beauty reviews just like this every single week so hit that subscribe button if you would like to join our fam now real quick guys I want to show you what the packaging looks like it's very pretty it's very sleek it does come in a good old-fashioned squeezy tube which I like for skin tints you are getting 1.1 fluid ounce for $49 so that is pretty standard in terms of volume but $49 that's the most expensive skin tint that I own I think when it included shipping it came out to $56 when I purchased this on the hourglass website so that's pretty expensive so I'll let you guys know if this is worth it and we will do some comparisons later on at the end of the video this has a 12 month shelf life and it is made in Italy on the Sephora website this is described as a formula that melts quickly into skin providing comfortable all-day wear and a sheer veil of coverage to diffuse imperfections and visibly even skin tone all while plumping and smoothing the complexion it boosts moisture levels by up to 52% for a dewy glow and provides a sheer veil of coverage for comfortable all day wear so this is supposed to give you kind of like that dewy look give decent amount of coverage be very hydrating so let's get this on my face i am going to link the shade that i use pretty much anything that i wear on my face in this video in the description box down below if you find this video helpful shopping through my links is a great way to support my channel now I'll just show you guys real quick on my finger there what it looks like it's not super runny it has a very glossy type of texture I'll show you what it looks like when I apply it to the face with my fingertips. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like applying this with my fingers. I think that's what I've learned over time. I've been testing this skin tint out for over a week now, maybe like about 10 days or so. And it does have a pretty like gooey feel to it, if that makes sense. I think you can tell from the sheen and see how it can be rather streaky. That kind of annoys me when I'm applying it with my fingertips. Sometimes I feel like I really have to work it into the skin and it just takes me longer. So I'm gonna show you guys on the other side. I'm gonna use a brush and I have found that that is much, much quicker. It's not a super thin formula that you can like build up in layers. It's very much like what you see is what you get. And as a reminder, friends, I do film in natural light, so I don't have any studio lights or anything. I'm just in front of a window to give you the most natural representation of this. Let's put a little bit up here on my forehead and we'll do kind of like a half and half. So this side of my face has one layer of the skin tint and then on this side, I have nothing. So you can still see all of my, just kind of like rosacea and hyperpigmentation. I did just get out of the shower recently, so I am a little bit flush. So you guys can really see how much this covers. And this is the side that has one layer. It doesn't have a ton of coverage. It is a skin tint. It's not so sheer, like the Glossier skin tint, for example. This is very much like you are seeing your skin peek through the formula. It's supposed to look super natural and it has that kind of like glossy, dewy texture. Now I put a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm gonna be using a brush to apply the product to the other side of the face. And I like to use these flat brushes so I can really stamp it on. And I feel like this is much, much quicker and a little bit less messy than using my fingers. I can link this brush or something very similar in the description box. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes. The great thing about using a brush as well is that I feel like you can build it up a little bit. So let me show you how on the side where I used my fingers, if I go over with a brush, see how that added just a little bit more coverage? It still looks like a skin tint, but it's a little bit easier to build up when you use the brush. This skin tint looks really good if you use like a glowy primer underneath. I often use the RMS serum, the new glowy serums that they came out with that has the SPF 30. It looks really good because this is a translucent tint, but then you get a little bit more blurring from that primer. But I'm not gonna use any primers today. I feel like 
if you have like a $50 skin tint, you really shouldn't need a primer. So in all of my foundation reviews, I really, I really don't include primers. All right, friends, here's what it looks like with nothing else, no concealer, nothing. It has decent coverage as we've already discussed and note the very, very like dewy, glossy texture. It doesn't really set down. I'll be honest with you. It takes like a couple of hours for it to set down a little bit. I'll talk a little bit more in my final thoughts. We are going to do the wear test, but what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to powder this side of my face and then I'm going to leave this side of the face unpowdered so that I can kind of talk you through when we do the wear test, how that affects the wear of this skin tint over time. Okay, party people, I did the rest of my makeup so you can see what the skin tint looks like when everything is complete. I'll link all the products that I use in the description box. I did go in with a powder bronzer. So I put on powder bronzer and powder blush to kind of see how it layers on top, or at least to show you what it looks like. You can definitely tell that it kind of mattifies part of my face, but I still think that dewiness shines through. Now, as promised, I am going to powder half of my face and I'm gonna be using one of the hourglass powders in the shade Dim Light. This is just kind of like the basic one that I typically use. And I just kind of, lay it on top specifically here around the jawline because this is the part of the face that didn't get any bronzer or blush etc and this does a good job of setting and kind of giving a little bit more blur it is very much a blurring formula on its own but this really gives it just like another level so that's what it looks like see how it's kind of taken down some of that shine and then here's the other side. I hope it's I hope it's clear there in the natural light. All right, friends, so now that we have all of that done, I'm gonna be doing a wear test throughout the day. And then at the end of the video, I will share my final thoughts. I do have some pros and cons. I don't think that this skin tint is gonna be for everybody, but I'll break that down after the wear test and then I will do some comparisons. All right, friends, so here is the midday check-in. This is after I've been wearing the skin tint for a couple of hours. As you can see, I am at work in my office, so please ignore the background. I have approached the natural light of the office window. And what you're going to see here is that the skin tint still looks pretty good. I don't think it's really worn away much. You can see on my nose, it's still hanging in there. I think my makeup still looks refreshed. Also, what you will notice is that it doesn't look dry at all. It still stays very, very hydrated. Now, I know that you can't feel my skin through the camera, but I will say that the powdered side still, it feels a little bit more comfortable than the side that doesn't have the powder, which really still has not set down. I definitely like the powdered side a little bit more. I think it looks more radiant. I feel like it's lasting a little bit longer, but overall, I think that the skin tint after a couple of hours of wear still looks pretty good. Good evening, friends. This is gonna be my last check-in with you guys. I wanted to show you what this makeup looks like at the end of the day. I have officially had this makeup on my face for 12 hours, so had a full work day, and this is what we are looking like. Now, what I will say to start off is the left side of my face, this one right here, where I don't have the powder, it does still feel a little bit tacky, a little bit sticky. It definitely kind of sets down and dries down and kind of wears away a little bit throughout the day. The side that has the powder, however, does feel a lot more matte and kind of set down. I wanna show you the nice thing about this skin tint is that it doesn't dry out the skin at all. Like there are no dry patches on my face at all. What I do see, however, is that the makeup looks a little bit patchy. Like it doesn't have the most longevity. It definitely lasts longer if I powder it, but I just notice, like here and there in certain places on my nose here as well, it does wear away. And when I first started testing this skin tint, especially before I started powdering it, I definitely noticed almost like a very distinctive streak right here and then I realized it was because the powdered areas that I had you know like the bronzer and the blush that was kind of sticking decently to my face and anywhere where I didn't powder it it just kind of became very apparent that it had worn away so I don't think it looks bad and in fact obviously the sun has gone down I'm just gonna turn let me turn my lights off I just have one little one in front of me here so you can maybe see it in a different light. I know it's not the most flattering, but you know, I don't think it necessarily 
looks bad, but it's not the most long lasting skin tint. I like it though, however, that it still at least stays hydrating on my face. So I'm gonna share a little bit more in my final thoughts, but I did wanna do that final check-in just so you can kind of get a nice close-up of what it looks like after 12 hours. All right, friends, time for my final thoughts. I'm gonna let you know what I think of this skin tint. Do I like it? What are the pros, the cons? And then also I will compare this with some of my favorite skin tints that are currently in my collection. That are some of my holy grails. Now, up front, I'll just let you guys know, this isn't my favorite. It's not my favorite. I really don't think it is worth the money. That being said, I haven't watched any other YouTube reviews, but a lot of you guys in my comments have been telling me that you got this and you've really been enjoying it. And it does have good reviews on Sephora. So I just want to explain the things that I think are pros and then the things that I don't really like about it. And then I think the comparisons will kind of help demonstrate at least the opinion that I have. So as far as pros go, I do think that it has a very nice look on the face. I've worn this for over a week now. I've been wearing it in several videos that I've filmed. A lot of you guys have been telling me that my skin looks good. I think that it gives a nice blurring effect to the skin. It is very moisturizing. It doesn't get like crusty or dried out by the end of the day. Granted, I am testing it in the middle of the summer. It's a little bit more humid here where I live in Boston. It's not that super dry autumnal or winter weather, but I do think that this is going to stay hydrating throughout the year. When I take a look at the ingredients, the things that stand out to me are vitamin E, we have glycerin, we have squalane, we have hyaluronic acid, and we have shea butter extract. So a lot of very moisturizing properties. Nothing too crazy though. Like you're not, you're not really spending money on crazy skincare in this. And also personally for me, I don't really buy my skin tints or my foundations based on the skincare. That's just me. I already have skincare and sunscreen and all that good stuff that I use before I go in with these kinds of products. The way that I really like to wear this so far has been with, like I said earlier, these RMS. This is the Supernatural Radiance Serum SPF 30. I have this in two shades. I like to put this on underneath first and then I put just a little bit of this on top and it's a really beautiful, no makeup makeup type of look. So that's kind of the way I'm probably gonna be wearing it, just using a little bit because this kind of brings me into the cons and why it's just not really for me. It's very gooey. <laughs> it doesn't set down like at all. Even when I was doing the comparison swatches, I had the swatch of the Hourglass Skin Tint on my hand and after 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever of me kind of like playing around, comparing with other formulas, it didn't set down. It stayed like completely gooey and tacky. And I really just don't like that throughout the day, that feeling of like the stickiness on my face. I really feel like I need to powder this for it to feel comfortable on my skin. Like sometimes I can feel it like if I don't put it on in the right way, like the peach fuzz on my face is like stuck in the opposite direction. I don't like it. Like cat hair comes at my face. My face becomes a cat hair magnet when I wear this if I don't powder it. And it's like when I'm going for a skin tint, I'm not looking to powder it. It kind of goes against the whole idea of me wearing a skin tint, which is something fresh, something light, something quick, not too fussy. And I think that this is just a little bit too fussy for me. That's what I don't like about it. I kind of wish it had a little bit more coverage because it is so like gooey and glossy. I also just don't really enjoy the application process as you saw in the demo. I prefer to go in with a brush because I just don't like, I don't know, I just don't like touching it. I don't feel like it melts into the skin because it has that kind of gooey, sticky texture. I don't wanna be too dramatic here. It's not like, you know, a Jones Road miracle balm. It's not like straight up balm or anything like that. It's just a little bit too sticky for my taste. Now I wanna show you guys some comparisons with a couple of other skin tints that are in my collection. A lot of you guys requested comparisons with these. My favorite skin tint, in my collection right now is the Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin. What is this called? Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint. I have this in the shade two. I've had this for over a month now. I've been wearing this for a pretty big part of the summer. I love this. This is absolutely beautiful. And you would think that because this is called 
yummy skin and because a lot of the products in this line they're supposed to kind of give that like glowy dewy yummy type of look you'd think that this one would be the gooier one but it's not i'll show you a swatch comparison here i have the hourglass on the left and then i have the yummy skin on the right hopefully you guys can see from like the sheen of the product do you see how the hourglass it looks very wet it looks very kind of oily and dewy and then the yummy skin it still has that really nice like dewy texture to it but it's nowhere near as glossy as the hourglass one i feel like this kind of gives me the best of both worlds where i get some glow i get a little bit of blurring i get similar maybe a touch more coverage maybe a touch it's more easy to build this up but it's not sticky. I don't feel like I have to layer this up. I took a look at the ingredients of this one as well, and it's like pretty much the same ingredients, very, very similar ingredients to the Hourglass, except it has like a ceramide. The ingredients are very similar. It's just with the Hourglass, I did notice that like the squalane and some of the other ingredients that kind of give that more... I guess gooey texture are a little bit higher up in the ingredient list. So I think that's what's just causing that effect on the skin. So friends, I would buy this, I would buy this. The other thing is the price. Like with this one, you get a little bit more product. You get 1.58 ounces. And according to my notes, this is $36. So we have $49 versus $36. And I like this one a lot more so i would recommend this i'm gonna link all of these products down below i do have some more comparisons here for you all the next one that i have here is the fenty skin tint this one is still fab this one retails for 35 dollars, so it's only a dollar cheaper than the danessa myricks i still kind of like the danessa myricks because i don't know it gives me like a little bit more of a glow and i think it's better for dry skin i think the fenty this is kind of like a really good goldilocks skin tint where it's not like too dewy it's just a really nice tint that sets down in a very nice way gives a little bit of blurring i feel like this one doesn't last as long on my skin comment down below and let me know you know your experience with this there's also a really good shade range here so i think this one is great as well hopefully you can see from the comparison swatches the difference in textures between this and the hourglass you can see there that the fenty sets down a little bit more and even a little bit more than the danessa myricks and then the other one that i have here this is the Cali Ray skin tint. So this retails for $40. Out of all of the skin tints here, this one is the most matte. I wouldn't say that it's like matte, like a matte foundation, but it does set down. You'll see in the swatches here, I kind of let it dry down after like a minute or two. You can see the hourglass, it's still going. It's still gooey after sitting on my hand for like 10, 15 minutes. But the Cali Ray after just you know, two, three minutes, it kind of sets down. It gives a very airbrush kind of flawless look to the skin. And so I think that this one works the best for oily skin. I do kind of wish their shade range was a little bit wider. That's kind of like my one beef with the Cali Ray brand. And then I also have the Chantecaille Future Skin Foundation. This isn't marketed as a skin tint. It's marketed as a gel foundation. I would say like this and the Danessa Marks Yummy Skin, these are kind of my go-tos when it comes to kind of like a light wash of coverage. I like the Chanel Water Fresh tint as well, but that's like barely any coverage. It's like a whole another level of effect that you give your skin. When we take a look at the Chantecaille, it does have that glisteny gel-like texture, but when you see it swatched on the hand here, you can see there on the right, it does give you that nice dewy look, that kind of glass skin look, a little bit of translucency to the skin. But once again, it's not anywhere as dewy as the one from Hourglass. So I really like this. Like this is holy grail for me, but it is very expensive. I believe it's $89. So if you can't find it on sale, check out the Danessa Myricks one. That is my top pick. The only other skin tint that I brought out here, friends, is the one from YSL. This is from that new line, NU. I think it's like their clean beauty line. I think that this is the only product that I have from that line. Take a look at this awful swatch. I just could never get into this skin tint. So if you're curious, I really don't like it. See how it just settles into like every little line on the back of my hand. 
it's just not for me personally. It always dries out on my skin. In fact, I don't know why I even still have this. I'm gonna throw it out after this review. So there you have it, friends. Those are the pros and cons. It does seem like a lot of people really like this, but hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm saying here, that it's not really my favorite. It doesn't really set down. It's a little overpriced in my opinion, just because there's so many other good options out there. So it really isn't for me, but you know what? It's not only about my opinion, now it is your turn. Sound off in those comments down below and let me know how have you been getting on with this? Do you like the texture? Do you like the way that it wears? And also, how do you think it works compared to maybe some of the other skin tints that I mentioned in this video? If you like this video or if you found it helpful, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It's absolutely free to do. And if you want to purchase any of these, I will have my affiliate links down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, friends. And with that, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.